Welcome to HortTube. My name is Jim Putnam. This is the uh, second part of a shrub and tree tour that I am uh, doing in this a yard that I've been uh, landscaping during uh, 2020. I'll link the uh, first video up here in the corner if you're watching on YouTube. I showed the, uh, in the first video, I showed the, uh, the south side and a lot of screening material. And I stopped uh, somewhere, somewhere right in here. Uh, as you can see on the uh, drone, I'm going to uh, uh, move over uh, to the uh, moving north uh, across the yard and uh, where I'm standing right now is on the west side of the house and um, uh, south is over here and north is over there and I'm just going to be moving uh, that way with the rest of the uh, showing you the rest of the shrubs that are in this backyard. There will be a third uh, video. I have planted a lot of shrubs and trees in this yard and I want to uh, cover them pretty thoroughly. So the uh, third uh, video will be the uh, front yard space you'll see uh, pretty soon. So the uh, first video uh, tour of the uh, shrubs and trees ended right here with this white wedding hydrangea and this uh, golden Oakland holly uh, that's right here. So I'm just gonna continue down through the rest of this little island bed here, we'll call it. It's got a uh, path that comes uh, right through here that's going to a greenhouse that's behind the camera, It'll eventually be a greenhouse behind the camera. And then it's got the turf area uh, on this side over here. Ultimately, I want taller things in the middle, lower things out this way, lower things out that way. I'm gonna may have to do a little bit of, a, of rearranging. Some of the things have gone in the ground uh, uh, kind of a little bit out of place, but that, that's, that's not, not, not that big of a deal. I've got a native azalea right here called Solar Glow. I had planted one of these uh, at the old house. This is actually a Buddy Lee uh, introduction. I've got a lot of those in my, in my yard, that jewel box distillium that I had showed yesterday, uh, gardenia, uh, that I have coming up uh, in just a minute is his. And then of course the Encore Azaleas are his as well. Uh, this right here is a Viburnum nudum, which is a, a native uh, Viburnum, has fragrant uh, white flower clusters uh, in the spring. When I got this, it was just a little, a little stick in a pot earlier this year. And uh, uh, it has actually put on quite a bit of growth. I've taken some cuttings off of it that are already rooted in the, uh, in the greenhouse, but this one has, has really taken off uh, uh, pretty quickly. Uh, I'm going to uh, pick up the camera and show you the uh, rest of the pieces uh, that are in the bed here. One thing about this side over here, I had put in some things. They just, they were already tall in the container when they went in. Uh, and everything over here, um, for just whatever reason, I ended up buying them in smaller containers and that kind of thing. So there's not as much height differentiation through here, uh, but there will be. Uh, the, you know, a lot of this stuff will, will do quite a bit of growing over the next couple of years and create some differences uh, in height. Currently, that does not exist on this end of the bed, but uh, I'm gonna grab the camera and show you the rest of the shrubs here. So there's that Viburnum nudum. Uh, right up here on the uh, edge where the turf is, I have this Grand Cascade uh, butterfly bush, and uh, it started out a little slow uh, earlier in the season, but it has really come on now. And uh, this is a super nice uh, space. I've got it with some purple foliage things and some purple flowers uh, beside it, uh, but that Grand Cascade uh, butterfly bush has really put on a show. Let me give you some perspective of how long these flower clusters are. You know, my hand's about six inches long. So, I mean, you're looking at, uh, you know, probably 18 inch long uh, flower clusters on it uh, at this point. So that's been quite nice. I've got five Encore Zellias here. Uh, the uh, one on the front right here, Sunburst. It is the, uh, uh, it's got a flower coming right here that you can see. See how this one has the uh, pink uh, with a little bit of white, has a variegated flower on it. I actually planted two starburst right here behind it. This is starburst. Um, they'll start blooming again here in the uh, fall. There's one flower about to open here. Uh, starburst is new for 2021. Um, these, this plant's going to be, uh, be very, very popular. It's similar to sunburst. Um, I'm going to get in here and get you. There's a flower that's kind of open. You can see, but it has a little more of the white uh, showing up on it. It's a little bit brighter uh, than, uh, than sunburst, but I put them together here. I think they're gonna look um, really good in full flower at the same time, but that's a, this is autumn starburst. And like I say, it's new for 2021. It has that uh, uh, pink and white uh, variegated flower. Uh, this tree right here is called uh, Tokyo Tower. It's a, a fringe tree. Um, I did the video on this when I put it up. This is an upright, narrow fringe tree. This yard is so small that I don't want giant, giant trees out here, but I do want uh, vertical elements. This one hasn't done a whole lot of growing, but uh, it will flower again in the spring. But uh, um, it's a really, 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 really nice uh, tree, but that variety is called Tokyo Tower. Uh, back here toward this uh, back line, this fence is being replaced uh, 
in just a few weeks. And I'm going to have an upcoming video um, called uh, uh, Next. I guess I'll just call it uh, what I'm doing next in the yard. And the actual, the first next thing is to pull this back fence out and uh, work on this fence. I've got five or six feet behind these things that have already been planted uh, that I can put some taller um, evergreen things in uh, or some sort of mixed border across there um, and, and create a backdrop for these other plantings that I've done uh, back here. But that, that, that's coming pretty soon. But pretty much from here, uh, going back to this line uh, is almost all shade uh, things. And this is uh, the uh, Soft Caress Mahonia. I've shown it many, many times on the channel, but look how much Look how much these have grown this year. These were little one gallon containers uh, in this space. These will have yellow flowers on them uh, in the winter time. There are actually other Mahonias that bloom a little better than Soft Caress. I don't want to sell it on the flowers, nor would you have to sell it on the flowers. Look how, look how beautiful this thing actually is. Uh, and it's called Soft Caress because it, uh, it doesn't have the spines that some of the other uh, Mahonia have. I'll show you another Mahonia in just a minute right back there. Uh, moving along here, um, I've got a... Uh, uh, Miss Lemon Abelia. Uh, this variety uh, grows wider than tall. I've shown the uh, Abelia from the Southern Living Plant Collection on the channel many, many times. It's got the small uh, white white flowers on it. The flowers don't show up all that well on the uh, variegated uh, Abelias, uh, but the uh, all the pollinators absolutely love the uh, flowers on them. And uh, of course, that variegated foliage will be on that uh, year round. This is Diamond Spire Gardenia. This is one of Buddy Lee's other introductions. Uh, I think this thing's gonna be everywhere in the next few years as well. This is an upright, narrow growing gardenia. Uh, super interesting. I think people will want this in containers, any place along a foundation where you want something upright and narrow. The foliage is different than any gardenia I've ever seen. It grows really, really tight around the, uh, around the stems and then flowers are coming on it now. Just like the gardenia I talked about yesterday, it went through a little bit of a rough patch when it first went in, but uh, it's come back out nicely and it's about to start blooming again for the, uh, for the fall. So for those of you who haven't seen my contorted uh, Japanese maple that I've had in this, uh, haven't, ha I've had this one in a container, I don't know how long um, I've had it actually at this point, uh, maybe as many as 10 years, but you see how I've contorted it uh, over the years. And uh, this is Tamukiyama is this a uh, variety. Uh, I move it here and there. That's why I've kept it in a container. It's just an interesting, it's just an interesting piece. Uh, and I have to uh, come in here to the top at some point and uh, bend, this, bend this piece back right here and restake it. And so I can continue uh, with that process of, uh, of contorting it. Some people love this thing and some people, <laughs> some people have made negative comments about why would I hurt this tree so much? But actually this has been a very well loved uh, tree over the years and I'm, I'm not hurting it at all by doing that. The next tree uh, right here is another upright narrow one. This is Golden Falls uh, Red Bud. This is uh, one of Danny Warner's uh, introductions. I did um, some a pollinator tour video at his house uh, a couple times uh, this season, but this is a, a golden weeping red bud. I have a, uh, um, a hummingbird that likes to sit right on the top of it that is the most camouflaged thing um, I have ever seen. It is the, 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 the uh, hummingbird is the exact same color of this tree, but this, this one will bloom in the uh, late winter or early spring and leaf out with gold foliage and it just weeps uh, like what you're seeing right there. Uh, I've got a uh, purple daydream Laura Petalum right here. It was put in as a little tiny, tiny one gallon. Uh, it's been a little slow to start because of that, but it's taken off now. I think it's gonna put on some growth here uh, in the fall. Like I've said, I'm covering all the uh, perennials and grasses and everything, um, uh, all, the, all the salvias and everything in a, a separate video. I've got one other uh, uh, Laura Petalum in here called Emerald Snow, and you can see the white flowers on it. It's a green foliage, it's a dwarf, green foliage variety that has white flowers. Um, Laura Petalum's in the witch hazel family, so it has those same little frilly, same little frilly flowers, but you see how nice and round and compact that is. Uh, some of these annuals, this celosia that's on top of it, it'll be out of here um, pretty soon. And then I've got a dwarf uh, pittosporum uh, right here that uh, also has, a, has some uh, marigolds uh, on top of it, but they'll, they're coming off of it pretty soon. A really nice, compact, low-growing pittosporum. This will flower eventually. They don't typically flower in the first year or so um, that you put them in the ground, but a uh, really nice, compact, 
habit, shiny foliage uh, year round. Uh, I'm going to work my way um, back here to the few things that I've planted around the, uh, the shed already. I did the video when I planted this Dragon Prince Cryptomeria. This thing's soft to the touch. Really compact growing variety. Uh, it had um, it browned a little bit around the bottom initially. I think I may have under underwatered it initially, but done great since then. This rose is called It's a Breeze. It's uh, pretty much bloomed uh, all season long. It's a disease resistant dwarf uh, rose. Um, you can see the cluster of red flowers here. Of course, now it's early September. It's just about done uh, at this point, but uh, it's really uh, been impressive. It's put on quite a quite a show. I'll cut this probably pretty low in the late winter. And so uh, it'll have all summer to come back to, uh, to this height. Uh, this is a uh, Florida Sunshine Elysium, shown it many times on the channel. I'll probably let it get up, you know, maybe right in here, the three or four foot range and just kind of hold it there. But it'll be a nice uh, gold backdrop uh, in this uh, dark, what, is, what amounts to a dark corner uh, late in the day. Uh, this um, Camellia Japonica right here is called Early Wonder. It is butted up right here. Gets very, very large uh, double pink flowers uh, in, the, uh, in the late winter uh, and early spring. And uh, some fall flowers on it as well. That's the reason it's called Early Wonder. It will actually bloom uh, before Christmas and, and some residual flowers um, after Christmas as well. Uh, this is a, uh, a grapevine called Rasmataz that I'm actually growing up the shed. I'm going to take it and let it go across the front right there and then up right here. Um, but this variety is called Rasmataz. It's already grown, I don't know, three or four feet. I just planted this uh, just a few weeks ago. So there's the shrubs that have been planted on this side of the uh, shed. I, one of the, I think the first plant I put in on this whole uh, job was this Ruby um, Camellia Sasanqua right here. This is a compact growing uh, Sasanqua Camellia that blooms red in uh, November. Uh, it's really loaded up with quite a few uh, flower buds. It may be hard to see. Uh, but uh, this thing should be flowering by late October, something like that. Uh, there's a uh, little Miss Figgy fig here. I planted one of these at the other house. That's a dwarf uh, fig, and uh, it, it, it still gets some height on it, but not 25 feet. So it's just a, uh, but, but like I say, it, it more, a more manageable uh, growing, uh, growing fig. Really nice foliage on that plant. If it ever offered figs or not, it wouldn't matter. This tropical look. Uh, to this plant. I'm going to put another one of these out on the driveway um, in, the, uh, in the front yard. I'm going to spin back around. I missed a couple things in the center island bed right here. This is another Encore Azalea. This one's called Autumn Lilac. You can see how compact uh, and dense, uh, the dense habit that this one has. Uh, purple flowers, uh, purple flowers on it. And then there's one more of those uh, ruby uh, Camellia sasanquas right here. So a few things that have been planted on this uh, back line, like I say, there's a lot more space here that will have uh, some additional items planted, uh, hopefully before fall is over. This is a uh, Big Daddy Hydrangea. This one gets gigantic uh, clusters of uh, flowers on it uh, during the uh, uh, late spring and through, uh, through most of the summer. Of course, they faded out uh, at this point. I had put some good photos on uh, Instagram of this one, but it's just amazing how big the uh, uh, flower clusters are over 12 inches uh, round as this thing matures. This is a, uh, a variegated Akuba that I got at a nursery, uh, I don't know, sometime at the end of last year, uh, maybe, and I believe it's a, a, a new variety. It was in, mixed into some gold dust. It's got this uh, spotting on it. It was a bigger plant, and uh, while I was doing some cleanup on this back line pruning, uh, this magnolia right here, I stepped back on it and uh, broke a big chunk out of it, So, um, but it's recovering from that. This is an unknown Camellia Sasanqua right here. It is butted up like crazy. I may be able to identify it uh, once it starts flowering uh, later in the season. This is a uh, mountain snow uh, Pieris right here. Uh, this will flower in the uh, late winter, super compact form. It'll have another larger evergreen thing behind it eventually. And this is another Mahonia called Marvel. It gets a giant cluster of yellow flowers on top of it uh, during the uh, winter time. I'm hoping it'll flower this first season. I don't know, um, but I'm, 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 I am hopeful for it. It's put on a lot of growth already, as you can see. I think it was probably somewhere about that tall when it went in. So done a lot of growing. After it flowers, I think I probably would take 
and cut this uh, back a little bit to try to get it to uh, to fill out down at the uh, at the bottom. And the last shrub along this back line is a Florida Elysium right here. That's the uh, the gold Elysium over there, and this is the regular Florida Elysium uh, or, or or anise. So I'm going to move over to uh, the last spot in the backyard and show you a few more pieces. So right here on the uh, west side of the uh, new porch, I think there's about six more pieces here uh, to show you. Uh, I've got a uh, um, griffin uh, playing in pine straw right here and holly wandering around. Uh, this uh, camellia right here is called uh, uh, October Magic Orchid. It has a variegated pink and white flower on it. Absolutely loaded with buds. This one will be blooming in uh, uh, by mid to late October and it'll bloom right up until about Christmas. Uh, in this uh, container right here I've got a little dwarf cryptomeria called Tiny Tim. It's grown maybe maybe an inch <laughs> this year uh, that's a super little, interesting little uh little cryptom area i may eventually put it in in the ground but for now i think you know maybe it'll spend another year in a container i've got a windmill palm in this container which is actually hardy here but it wouldn't be hardy in a container where the roots can freeze solid got it under planted with begonias right there it's putting on some new growth uh, right now there's a frond coming up right here in the middle of it but it's um it's grown quite a bit uh during this season this is a uh, Sunshine Ligustrum. I showed the other one yesterday. This one I'm gonna keep cone-shaped. I'll spin you back around real slow and you can see the other one over there uh, in the uh, mixed border. I'm gonna allow that one to get pretty big, but this one I'm gonna keep is just a small, a small cone shape. So this plant, um, the Touch of Gold Holly that I showed in the last video, and this plant, which is uh, called a uh, Stellar, uh, Stella Ruby Magnolia were all developed by the same person, uh, Pat McCracken, and uh, this is a, a little red flowering, uh, pretty fast growing uh, magnolia. It's actually grown quite a bit for me uh, already. I put a photo on uh, Instagram yesterday of a flower. It's unfortunately uh, fallen off, but I got new. There's another. Let's see if I can show you this flower bud right here. You see that one? That'll open red, uh, and they're, they're fragrant, fast growing. Great, great plant. This plant's going to be everywhere. It's a new introduction uh, uh, for next year. And then I got another um, one that's being introduced uh, later as well. This is a uh, new Mahonia variety. Super, super compact growing. Looks wicked, but it's really, it's really kind of not. It'll get you, I guess, if you if you tried hard enough. But uh, it's just constantly blooming. Uh, these yellow flowers right here. So I think overall the uh, trees and shrubs that I've put in this year have responded really, really well. Uh, if you haven't watched uh, since I started this landscape project earlier this year, I actually laid down a layer of compost and uh, then I mulched over that. I pull back the mulch when I'm digging holes to plant the plants and uh, the compost that I had put down originally gets incorporated uh, at that time. And I fertilized uh, in the late winter, uh, maybe about mid spring. So a lot of the things in this yard I would say the vast majority were planted after the time I had fertilized. So they have not been fertilized at all, uh, just that additional compost that was mixed into the hole uh, when they were planted. So but that's it for this, uh, for the backyard space. The third video, I will uh, show the uh, front yard. Uh, and uh, obviously, you know, uh, then I'm going to do a video just on, uh, on the perennials and the annuals, the flowering things you're seeing uh, as I was doing this tour. Uh, I'll go over in, uh, in that video. And then I'm going to do a what's next video, like I say, and include uh, all the uh, repairs that I've got to make to the fence and other things that I'm, other repairs I'm making on the exterior of the house and that kind of thing. So uh, look uh, for those upcoming videos. Thanks for watching.